Hello, and this is Mr. Filipek, and today's talk is a little bit of an introduction to genetics and to talk about who is uh, this guy named Gregor Mendel. But before we get into Gregor Mendel, the first question we want to ask is why do children look like their parents? You know, if we you know, just take a look at this first, uh, you know, picture here, you know, who does, you know, the son look like? Well, sometimes that's hard to determine because remember that this son is a combination of the genes from both dad and mom. And sometimes maybe in your own life, people have said, well, you know, your nose looks like your dad's, or your eyes look like your mom's, or you've got your dad's smile. You know, and the idea is, is we can trace a lot of family lineage, you know, when you look at family photos, and, and really kind of see, you know, where maybe we got some of our, some of our traits from. Well, that's the whole idea behind genetics. And it's actually the, you know, what we call the study of heredity. And what heredity is, basically this passing down of traits from one generation to the next. And so when you go off to have offspring, or any organism go off, goes to have offspring, they're going to pass certain traits um, from mom uh, you know, to the child, in the case of humans, or offspring for any other organism. And it's all done and all controlled by our genes and chromosomes. And if you remember, uh, genes are located within our DNA. And then during meiosis, those genes are then brought into chromosomes. And what I have here is a picture of something called a karyotype. And what this karyotype shows is all the different uh, pairs of chromosomes that humans would have. And Remember, during prophase, those chromosomes, homologous chromosomes, line up, or they kind of pair up. And, you know, here you see, you know, here's chromosome 1, chromosome 2, chromosome 3, and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden we go way down here, and we notice that there's not a number next to it, but, you know, we have this X or a Y. And that is because, uh, you know, this set of chromosomes actually codes for um, the gender of the organism. And in the case here, when we have an X and a Y, uh, that means that this, uh, this is a human, this would be a male or a son. Uh, the other combination of sex chromosomes we could have would be an X and an X, and that would be a female, or in our case, a daughter. And so, uh, you know, who determines uh, whether it's male or female? Well, it's actually the male, because uh, females can only donate an X chromosome. That's the only chromosome that's in the egg cell, whereas a male... For a male, he can donate either a Y chromosome or an X chromosome in the sperm. Well, who started this whole idea of genetics? It's really credited to a guy named Gregor Mendel, who was an Austrian monk way back in the 1860s. And what he did is he spent a lot of time uh, working in the monastery, working with uh, garden peas. And through his work, he kind of came along with this whole idea of genetics. And so commonly, you know, we refer to him as the father of genetics. And uh, what Mendel was able to do is he was the first person to be able to predict how traits were going to be passed from one generation to the next. And so, you know, in this example here, here we have a, you know, a yellow pea pod crossed with a, you know, another yellow pea pod. And one might just quickly assume that we would get nothing but yellow pea pods. But in all actuality, Mendel says, no, I would predict that we're going to get, you know, about 75% yellow and 25% green. And people were pretty astonished by this fact. Um, you know, how was he able to so accurately predict, um, you know, which genes were going to be passed from generation to generation? Well, he did it because he studied one trait at a time. and He was very meticulous in his work. And the other thing is, is he analyzed all of his data mathematically. And, you know, he used, you know, what we commonly call now a Punnett square. And this Punnett square, which is you know right here, uh, kind of shows you how we can use this you know mathematical uh, module here to really come up with how our uh, traits could be passed. Um, on the outside here, we place uh, basically the products of meiosis. All right. Um, remember that we inherit two traits. We inherit one trait from mom, one trait from dad. And when we undergo meiosis, those traits are split up. And so what we do is we put one set of parents' traits along the top, another set of parents' traits along the side. And then what we do is we kind of just fill in. We kind of play what I like to call battleship. 
So like in this first box, we'll take this first capital A, place that there, and place a little A from right here uh, next to it. And we'll keep you know, doing all this as we keep filling in this Punnett square. And again, just to kind of remember, we get this big A from right here, and we get this little A from right there. And so what we see here is that every one of these offspring are going to be big A, little a. And if we look back at the parental generation here, we see that big A is commonly associated with the yellow flower or yellow pod. And so all of these uh, offspring are going to be yellow. Now somebody might ask, well, what happens if you end up with a green? Well, that means that one of these two, uh, especially this one here, uh, this actually wasn't the genotype um, of that parent. And we'll kind of explain what genotype is here uh, at, the, at the very end. And the other thing here is he looked at multiple trials. So if we kind of zoom in here a little bit, you know, he would start off with a parental generation. And he would start off with a tall plant and a short plant. And what he called these things were actually pure breeding, which means that no matter how many times he crossed, let's say, this plant, uh, we would always end up with a tall plant. And so we'd start with this parental generation, and he would say that if I cross a tall plant and a small plant, I'm going to get all tall plants again. But he knows that he got, that this new plant got one trait um, from the tall plant and one trait from the small plant. And so what he would do then is take this first generation and mate them again. And then what he found is, is he would get um, basically three, you know, right here, three tall plants to one short plant. And so we call that ratio three to one. And what's interesting here is that we all of a sudden, again, see the reemergence of one of the original parents. Okay? And so basically this small plant trait literally skipped a generation. All right? And so it kind of intrigued Mendel and he wanted to take you know, a, a deeper look at those factors. So, but why garden peas? Well, garden peas grow very, very quickly. Matter of fact, they, they can go from seed to new plant in anywhere from two to three weeks, depending on the growing conditions. Um, and in addition, garden peas provide buckets and buckets of offspring. And so, um, you know, in addition to that, garden peas have many different traits. You know, whether it be seed shape or seed color, you know, we have flower color, purple versus white, uh, pod color, pod shape, uh, and then plant height. And so he was able to take a look at all these different traits. Um, and then, you know, what did he find out? He found out this idea of genes and alleles. Now, genes are basically uh, a section of DNA that determines a particular trait. Well, Mendel didn't call them genes because he didn't really know what that was about. So he actually called them factors. So he said there were certain inheritable factors that were very, very important. And he said that there were different forms. We called them alleles. And we represent alleles by using letters. Okay? And so, for example, with the case of plant size, let's say we want to use a capital T to represent a tall allele, which means that we will use um, you know, a capital T every time we want to talk about a tall plant. All right? And we'll use a lowercase t to talk about short plants, okay? And what happens here is that we get one allele, we get one allele from each parent. And there are basically three different combinations of alleles. And the first one is what we call a homozygous dominance. So if we kind of take a look at our root words, homo, as you might remember, means same. So if you notice here, this combination of alleles, we have two capital T's. And we have capital T's because of this idea of dominance. Now, dominant doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. It just means the trait that is most often seen in a population. All right? So in this case, you know, if uh, big T equals tall, uh, tall plants are seen most often in uh, the certain population. Another combination we would have is called heterozygous. And you may remember that the prefix hetero means different. And if you notice here in this combination, so here we have one capital T and we have one lowercase t. 
And so because uh, we have the one dominant trait here, we're going to see the, the, the dominant allele, which again is a tall plant. Well, the last combination, as you might have guessed, uh, uses two lowercase t's. And again, we call this homozygous recessive. And again, remember, recessive doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means a trait less often seen or a trait that actually can be hidden. Or in Mendel's terms, we'll call it a factor. And, you know, homozygous, again, because we have the same letters, so little t, little t, recessive meaning the trait that is less often seen in the population. And in this case, you know, if we use, um, you know, the idea of, you know, big T equals tall, little t equals short, we would expect to see a short plant. All right? Well, that brings us to our last little topic for today, this idea of genotype and phenotype. Now, the genotype is a combination of alleles that we inherit from our parents, and it's always represented by the letters. And if you remember from the last slide here, you know, if we have two big T's, we call that homozygous dominant. Um, if we have two little T's, we call that homozygous recessive. And that, you know, uh, the one in the middle here, where we have one big T, one little t, is called het uh, heterozygous. Another way to kind of look at this, this is sometimes referred to also as a hybrid, okay? Where we get one uh, capital T, one little t uh, from each parent. Think about a hybrid car, uh, it runs on both gas and electric. Well, we don't usually talk in terms of genotype. We typically talk in terms of phenotype, and that is basically the physical appearance of a particular trait. And so the example here is tall versus short. So in order to be tall, we would need to make sure we inherited one of the tall alleles. So in this case, it would be a, a, you know, a big T. And if we uh, inherited that, we'd end up with a tall plant. Versus uh, if we wanted to uh, have a short plant here, we would need to inherit both recessive alleles. That means both mom and dad had a recessive allele. But it doesn't necessarily mean they were recessive themselves, um, because remember, you know, the two combinations they could have would be big T, uh, little t, or big T, big T. Um, so as long as they carried this recessive allele, we could end up with a short plant. Okay? So remember, genotypes is a combination of letters that we inherit. Well, phenotype is the appearance. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, genetics introduction and a little information on Gregor Mendel. And as always, thanks for listening.